the Bible, and the Catechism, in a year. Day 251 From the Book of Job Bildad speaks, God punishes the wicked. Then Bildad the Shuhite answered. How long will you hunt for words? Consider, and then we will speak. Why are we counted as cattle? Why are we stupid in your sight? You who tear yourself in your anger, shall the earth be forsaken for you? Or the rock be removed out of its place? Yea, the light of the wicked is put out, and the flame of his fire does not shine. The light is dark in his tent, and his lamp above him is put out. His strong steps are shortened, and his own schemes throw him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walks on a pitfall. A trap seizes him by the heel, a snare lays hold of him. A rope is hid for him in the ground, a trap for him in the path. Terrors frighten him on every side, and chase him at his heels. His strength is hunger bitten, and calamity is ready for his stumbling. By disease his skin is consumed. The firstborn of death consumes his limbs. He is torn from the tent in which he trusted, and is brought to the king of terrors. In his tent dwells that which is none of his. Brimstone is scattered upon his habitation. His roots dry up beneath, and his branches wither above. His memory perishes from the earth, and he has no name in the street. He is thrust from light into darkness, and driven out of the world. He has no offspring or descendant among his people, and no survivor where he used to live. They of the west are appalled at his day, and horror seizes them of the east. Surely such are the dwellings of the ungodly. Such is the place of him who knows not God. Job replies, I know that my Redeemer lives. Then Job answered, How long will you torment me? And break me in pieces with words? These ten times you have cast reproach upon me. Are you not ashamed to wrong me? And even if it be true that I have erred, my error remains with myself. If indeed you magnify yourselves against me, and make my humiliation an argument against me, know then that God has put me in the wrong, and closed his net about me. Behold, I cry out, violence, but I am not answered. I call aloud, but there is no justice. He has walled up my way, so that I cannot pass, and he has set darkness upon my paths. He has stripped from me my glory, and taken the crown from my head. He breaks me down on every side, and I am gone. And my hope has he pulled up like a tree. He has kindled his wrath against me, and counts me as his adversary. His troops come on together. They have cast up siege works against me, and encamp round about my tent. He has put my brethren far from me, and my acquaintances are wholly estranged from me. My kinsfolk and my close friends have failed me. The guests in my house have forgotten me. My maidservants count me as a stranger. I have become an alien in their eyes. I call to my servant, but he gives me no answer. I must beseech him with my mouth. I am repulsive to my wife. Loathsome to the sons of my own mother. Even young children despise me. When I rise they talk against me. All my intimate friends abhor me. And those whom I loved have turned against me. My bones cleave to my skin and to my flesh. And I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have pity on me, have pity on me, O you my friends. For the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? Why are you not satisfied with my flesh? O oh, that my words were written. O oh, that they were inscribed in a book. O oh, that with an iron pen and lead. They were graven in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then from my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. If you say, How we will pursue him. And, the root of the matter is found in him. 
Be afraid of the sword. For wrath brings the punishment of the sword. That you may know there is a judgment. Zophar speaks, wickedness receives just retribution. Then Zophar the Namathite answered. Therefore my thoughts answer me. Because of my haste within me. I hear censure which insults me. And out of my understanding a spirit answers me. Do you not know this from of old? Since man was placed upon earth. That the exulting of the wicked is short. And the joy of the godless but for a moment? Though his height mount up to the heavens. And his head reach to the clouds. He will perish forever like his own dung. Those who have seen him will say, Where is he? He will fly away like a dream, and not be found. He will be chased away like a vision of the night. The eye which saw him will see him no more. Nor will his place any more behold him. His children will seek the favor of the poor. And his hands will give back his wealth. His bones are full of youthful vigor. But it will lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness is sweet in his mouth. Though he hides it under his tongue. Though he is loath to let it go. And holds it in his mouth. Yet his food is turned in his stomach. It is the gall of asps within him. He swallows down riches and vomits them up again. God casts them out of his belly. He will suck the poison of asps. The tongue of a viper will kill him. He will not look upon the rivers. The streams flowing with honey and curds. He will give back the fruit of his toil. And will not swallow it down. From the profit of his trading. He will get no enjoyment. For he has crushed and abandoned the poor. He has seized a house which he did not build. Because his greed knew no rest. He will not save anything in which he delights. There was nothing left after he had eaten. Therefore his prosperity will not endure. In the fullness of his sufficiency he will be in straits. All the force of misery will come upon him. To fill his belly to the full. God will send his fierce anger into him. And rain it upon him as his food. He will flee from an iron weapon. A bronze arrow will strike him through. It is drawn forth and comes out of his body. The glittering point comes out of his gall. Terrors come upon him. Utter darkness is laid up for his treasures. A fire not blown upon will devour him. What is left in his tent will be consumed. The heavens will reveal his iniquity. And the earth will rise up against him. The possessions of his house will be carried away. Dragged off in the day of God's wrath. This is the wicked man's portion from God. The heritage decreed for him by God. From the Book of Wisdom I shall be found keen in judgment. And in the sight of rulers I shall be admired. When I am silent they will wait for me. And when I speak they will give heed. And when I speak at greater length. They will put their hands on their mouths. Because of her I shall have immortality. And leave an everlasting remembrance to those who come after me. I shall govern peoples. And nations will be subject to me. Dread monarchs will be afraid of me when they hear of me. Among the people I shall show myself capable, and courageous in war. When I enter my house, I shall find rest with her. For companionship with her has no bitterness. And life with her has no pain, but gladness and joy. When I considered these things inwardly, and thought upon them in my mind, that in kinship with wisdom there is immortality, and in friendship with her, pure delight, and in the labors of her hands, unfailing wealth, and in the experience of her company, understanding, and renown in sharing her words, I went about seeking how to get her for myself. As a child I was by nature well endowed. And a good soul fell to my lot. Or rather, being good, I entered an undefiled body. But I perceived that I would not possess wisdom unless God gave her to me. And it was a mark of insight to know whose gift she was. So I appealed to the Lord and besought Him. And with my whole heart I said. From the Gospel of Luke Some Sayings of Jesus And He said to His disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to Him by whom they come.
It would be better for him if a millstone were hung round his neck and he were cast into the sea, than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Take heed to yourselves, if your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him, and if he sins against you seven times in the day, and turns to you seven times, and says, I repent, you must forgive him. The Apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this sycamine tree, Be rooted up, and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Will any one of you, who has a servant ploughing or keeping sheep, say to him when he has come in from the field, Come at once and sit down at table? Will he not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, and gird yourself and serve me, till I eat and drink, and afterward you shall eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that is commanded you, say, We are unworthy servants, we have only done what was our duty. Jesus cleanses ten lepers. On the way to Jerusalem he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers, who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him, Thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then said Jesus, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way, your faith has made you well. From the Catechism Article 8, Sin Mercy and Sin The Gospel is the revelation in Jesus Christ of God's mercy to sinners. The angel announced to Joseph, You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The same is true of the Eucharist, the sacrament of redemption, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. God created us without us, but he did not will to save us without us. To receive his mercy, we must admit our faults. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As St. Paul affirms, where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. But to do its work grace must uncover sin so as to convert our hearts and bestow on us righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Like a physician who probes the wound before treating it, God, by His Word and by His Spirit, casts a living light on sin. Conversion requires convincing of sin, it includes the interior judgment of conscience, and this, being a proof of the action of the Spirit of Truth in man's inmost being, becomes at the same time the start of a new grant of grace and love, receive the Holy Spirit. Thus in this convincing concerning sin we discover a double gift, the gift of the truth of conscience and the gift of the certainty of redemption. The Spirit of Truth is the Consoler. The Definition of Sin Sin is an offense against reason, truth, and right conscience, it is failure in genuine love for God and neighbor caused by a perverse attachment to certain goods. It wounds the nature of man and injures human solidarity. It has been defined as an utterance, a deed, or a desire contrary to the eternal law. Sin is an offense against God, against you, you alone, have I sinned, and done that which is evil in your sight. Sin sets itself against God's love for us and turns our hearts away from it. Like the first sin, it is disobedience, a revolt against God through the will to become like God's, knowing and determining good and evil. Sin is thus love of oneself even to contempt of God. In this proud self-exaltation, sin is diametrically opposed to the obedience of Jesus, which achieves our salvation. It is precisely in the Passion, when the mercy of Christ is about to vanquish it, that sin most clearly manifests its violence and its many forms, unbelief, murderous hatred, shunning and mockery by the leaders and the people, Pilate's cowardice and the cruelty of the soldiers, Judas' betrayal, so bitter to Jesus, Peter's denial and the disciples' flight. However, at the very hour of darkness, the hour of the prince of this world, the sacrifice of Christ secretly becomes the source from which the forgiveness of our sins will pour forth inexhaustibly.